Big inspiration for me, and I've said this quite a few times, so she probably is a bit like, why is she obsessed with me? Helen Mirren. I've been obsessed with Helen Mirren since I was really young. I was watching Prime Suspect when I really shouldn't have been. I was too young to watch it. But I think the thing that I love about Helen Mirren is, is that she seems like such a, a kind of heart open actress and really instinctive. And I feel like her career has just got better and better and better as she's got older. That was always a thing for me, even when I was super young in my teens. I just thought that looks like somebody who's, whose experience is getting better as she gets older. And I think that that's what we all hope as actresses, particularly. I've looked up to Jack Thorne. I feel like I owe my career to him in a lot of ways, <laughs> definitely. He has always been a massive support for me and his focus on telling such important disabled stories and being a real champion and ally for the disabled community is has always been something that I have admired and I just feel really fortunate to have worked with him on many occasions, so yeah. Cheers Jack! Throughout my upbringing I didn't really have many death role models to look up to because there wasn't very many out there. But I have to say, um, growing up, Audrey Hepburn was like my icon looking up to because I just think she's so positive. She looked beautiful, I love her fashion, and I just love how happy she is. And then later on, it was Dolly Parton. I always mention Dolly Parton because Dolly Parton is unapologetic herself and, and she just owns who she is. So I'm going to leave it saying, she just owns who I am. Yes, there is someone who I've looked up to for a very long time who actually also through the Breakthrough Programme became a mentor and that's Saran Jones. She's yeah now become like a friend and just she's such a maternal figure that is just there to offer so much advice and I think she's so amazing at what she does in her in her work but then also all the kind of the social impact that she leaves and what she wants to do with sets and what she wants to create with like safe working environments. Uh, it's just really uh, inspirational and she's just like a leader that I just really look up to and want to follow in in the, the her talent and also just her as a person like around work. It's just inspiring. I grew up in rural Wales so I didn't really have that many filmmakers around me in my life so really the people that I looked up to were other filmmakers. There were two filmmakers actually that really influenced me and made me want to make films and they were David Lynch and Douglas Sirk. David Lynch because when I saw his films they were the closest to dreams or nightmares that I'd ever seen cinema be. He kind of showed me another way of filmmaking almost and then when I discovered Douglas Sirk who's a very different in some ways filmmaker um, I was so inspired by the way he used mise-en-scene and the way he used every element on screen to um, say the things that can't be said. I think that really kind of basically sort of showed me the poetry of cinema in a way and um, both of those became uh, mentors that didn't actually exist in my real life but that um, hugely influenced me as a filmmaker and certainly made me want to make films. There are so many people, that's a very unfair question. I suppose the person that kept coming up is Ridley Scott. Uh, when, I, when I got the BAFTA breakthrough and they asked me who do you want to be your mentor, I said Ridley Scott because he's somebody I've, I've just followed what he does all the time and I, liked, I like being inspired by him even though he's a director and I was an actor. I've, I got so much, he's a very inspiring man, um, everything he does and his approach to the industry. I lapped up every single one of his interviews. Uh, studying how he made movies and how he thinks about creating art. It's a double question because I'm, I'm a bit in love with Ethan Hawke now as well, who's, who's literally speaking to my heart and I think for, for many people as well. But, but Ridley is the one that I really wanted to meet and talk and work with and thankfully a couple of months after the breakthrough I got to work with him so it was just uh, perfect. I always look up to a lot of people from different industries. I don't just follow film industry only and I really feel like art forms are all connected and we are all uh, inspiring each other you know even subconsciously even just through conversation you put something in someone's mind so I've been always kind of trying to have the wide variety of inspirations starting from music art 
uh, movement practices in film. So there's no one in particular I wouldn't say, but one person I really like is Jacques Tati from 1960s. He's this French director that did an amazing film called Playtime. It's just really inspiring to me and, uh, you know, just always get very excited about making something visual that can, um, that can be so so beautiful and so fun at the same time. I've had a couple of really big inspirations, I think, in my career. The first one is June Sapong, who was a fantastic TV presenter when I was growing up and just a really lovely person. I was lucky enough to meet her and she's really just somebody who wants to bring people up behind her. She's somebody who wants to change the industry. And she's gone from being a TV presenter to somebody who works behind the scenes now. So she's done a lot with bringing diverse voices into the industry and retaining them, empowering them, helping them level up rather than just, you know, opening the door and then being like, find your own way. So I think she's incredibly inspiring. Another big inspiration for me is Amy Hennig. She is a legendary video game writer, director. She's a leader in the industry. And again, she's someone who has not just changed the face of storytelling in games. You know, we owe so much to her when it comes to video game world building and narrative. But she's also someone who is incredibly kind. I hosted an interview with her and she gave me so much great advice. She gave me her number. She was like, call me whenever you want if you need help. And I think that was a moment where I really thought this is who I want to be in the industry. I want to be you know, helping other people, bringing other people with me. We should all be rising together. I met this person recently and I don't think she knows, but I've always admired Siobhan Reddy. She's such a strong female studio director of Media Molecule. They've got, they're completely visionary and playful with everything they do. And yet she's got a heart of gold. Someone that has been a huge inspiration for me in my career is Akumi Nakamura, uh, who has started her own studio, Unseen, and she is very, very inspiring because she's uh, got this background as a concept artist, and you don't see that many concept artists, I'm an artist, uh, going into creative director roles within games. It's usually uh, designers or writers, but seeing an artist who has such uh, uh, an effervescent personality, uh, so much joy within their work, uh, leading a studio, she's killing it and I'm really inspired by her.